In this video, I'll show you how you can use tables in Google Docs to improve the presentation of your work. So within our Google Doc, click on Insert and Table, and if I scroll across, I have an option here to change the size of the table that I'd like to put in. I'm going to use a 4x4 table, so I'll click when it's at 4x4, and Google Docs inserts a 4x4 table for me. Notice that it fills the width of the page uh, and I'm on size 14, I'm on quite a large font size and it sets my row sizes to be the same. We're going to play around with this table, I've already prepared one with some information in it which I'll show you in a moment but when I do that I want to show you an additional um, feature on Google Docs which is quite useful. The table I prepared is at the top of page 2 of this document and to put it there I press the enter button quite a few times so let's scroll down to the top of page 2 and here it is and, Ah, there's a lot of white space at the top of page 2 now because I inserted a table in page 1 it needed somewhere to go and it moved everything down rather than use all that white space or lose it all rather um, I'm just going to delete, I'm pressing delete a few times here, it's deleting all those enter buttons that I press. So here's my table now, but I don't want it there, I want it at the start of page 2. So if I go to insert, break and page break, and you'll notice that there's a shortcut on the keyboard to hold the control button down and press enter. Um, I'm using a Windows machine, I'm assuming on a Mac it will be command plus enter. If I press that, it automatically puts my table at the start of page 2 and it doesn't matter what I do here I can insert another table scroll down and my previous table is already at the top of page 2 it hasn't moved down that's a useful feature for making sure that your sections always start at the top of a page So I have a table already that has some data in it. It has some information about students in three different year groups um, and which meal they chose from the cafeteria at lunchtime, the chicken, the beef or the vegetarian. And I just type this in using the default table setting. I'm going to change the layout of this table and show you some of the design features and hopefully then you'll see that the resulting table is a little bit better in its communication. The first thing I want to do is to make a copy of this table, so I'm going to click above it and drag down below it so that everything is selected. I'm going to do Edit, Copy. There are keyboard shortcuts for this, which you possibly know. Click below and Edit, Paste. And here's a copy of the table, so I'm going to do my design work on the second version here, and hopefully you can see how it's perhaps a little bit better than the first version. So I'll scroll down first of all so that we only have the second version to look at. The first thing I want to do is align all this information horizontally within the cell. So it's sitting in the middle of the cell. So I'll click and drag to select the whole table. Go up to the Align button here on the toolbar and choose Center Align. And that's put all my text in the middle. Now the columns are a bit wide. As I said earlier on it filled the whole page. So I'd like to change these columns a little bit. Um, there's a bit of guesswork here involved, but we can see from the toolbar at the top, sorry, the menu, sorry, the ruler at the top, that these columns are a little bit more than four centimeters wide. I'm using centimeters as my measurement tool. So let's have a guess at maybe three centimeters will be a decent width. I go to Format, Table, and Table Properties. We're going to use this menu quite a lot. And here it says column width. If I select on co the column width option, and I'm going to type 3. Now I'm using centimeters, so the dimension just default to centimeters. Ah, oh, that looks a little bit better. It's maybe a little bit narrower than we'd like, so let me just drag the table out a bit more. Ah, that's only made the final column wider. It's now wider than the others, which doesn't look very nice. So again, format, table, and there's an option here to distribute columns, and that will make all the columns the same width. Yeah, that looks better. OK, I'd like my table to be centred within the page as well. I have the information centred within the cells, 
but I'd like the table to be centered across the page. Format, Table, Table Properties, and here's the Table Alignment option at the moment. It's on the left. Let's choose Center. And there we go. Our table is now centered within the page. The rows have been to the default size for my font, which, which looks OK, but I'd like them a little bit larger. So there's two ways I can do this. I can go to Format, Table, Table Properties, and say Minimum Road Height. Let's choose 1.5 and see how we get on. Ah, that's probably a bit too big. I'll shrink one of them. But again, it shrunk the bottom row, but not the others. So Format table, distribute rows this time, and it makes them all the same size. That's a bit of a better size, but I don't like the fact that everything is at the top of the cell. I'd like it to be centered vertically as well. So once again, select everything in the table, format, table, table properties, and here we have cell vertical alignment. At the moment it's top. If we click middle, OK, Everything now sits nicely centered within the cells and our table's starting to look a little bit better. There's a couple more things I want to do with the table to really improve its visual appeal though. The first thing is I'd like these headings to be a little bit stronger so they stand out. I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is make them bold. Okay, well that's alright, but I want them to stand out a little bit more. If I select them all, up here is some more formatting toolbars. If I click on background colour, I'm going to choose a medium grey, I think. OK, that looks better. And I'd like the same on this side. Now, rather than do the same thing again, it's not particularly um, onerous, but we can use the Edit Redo feature, which has the keyboard shortcut there. And it's shaded those as well. I don't like this empty cell here. It's not really a part of the table. It has to be here as part of the structure, but I don't like the borders around it. I'd like to remove those. If I click in the cell, I get this little drop-down arrow in the right corner, which allows me to select borders. So I'll choose which borders I want, and I'm going to remove the top border. So let me select the top border there, and it's now highlighted. I've got some border control buttons here, and the border width, if I set to zero, that border will disappear. Let's go back and do the same thing for the left border, and that disappears as well. OK, I've got the same borders all around the table. I'd like to have a stronger border around the outside of the table. This is a little bit fiddly. I don't particularly like the way Google Docs does this. It takes a bit of time, but it's still OK to do. So, I'll select the whole of the bottom row. Notice now that my drop-down arrow is only at the right-hand end. I'll click there. I'm going to choose the bottom border and border width. Well, it's currently 1. Let's make it 2.25. OK. Now, I need to go through the rest of the table doing the same thing. I'm going to select the right border, border width, 2.25. top, border width 2.25, select these ones, left, border width 2.25. Now I'd like to select the border width to go here all the way across so it, it puts a strong border beneath the titles as well. So top, border width 2.25 and the same thing here on a strong border all the way down the outside. So I'll select those, go left, border width 2.25. OK, I'm reasonably happy with that. Now let's go back and look at where we started. I hope you'll agree that while this might not be exactly how you would choose to design it, that this second table communicates the information in a much clearer way than the original table does.